This is a 4550 copper cartridge. I'm going to pass it around. It's a 405 grain soft lead bullet. The detailed history discussions include the cartridges troopers fired from their Springfield carbine. If you left those bullets in a cartridge belt for too long, they developed a green buildup known as verdigris, which would jam your rifle. And since their lives depended on that ammo, few troopers had to be reminded to clean those bullets. The Springfield was a single shot weapon that troopers learned to load in a hurry by keeping their bullets close at hand. Here's what they did. Load, load, load. Three extra bullets in your hand. The 4570 was a deadly weapon, far more powerful than the lever action Winchesters and Henrys the Indians acquired. That is, if you hit what you were aiming at. They were definitely shooting high. And we have a whole bunch of hostile testimony that said, yeah, we were sitting there in the top of our teepee poles, we're getting shot out. I mean, you have to shoot pretty high to do that. But the 7th Cavalry had very little target practice, and many of its troopers were very poor shots, especially in the heat of battle. If you look at the amount of training these guys went into going into the 76 campaign, it was minimal, if any. For Americans back east, the shocking defeat of Custer was the 9-11 of its day, and the U.S. military did its best to learn from what happened. You notice into the 1880s, you start to see a progression of a marksmanship program, and they started to become riflemen. Cavalry school includes the opportunity to safely fire live rounds at a target range, and there's equal emphasis on how to safely fire blanks. This is your one and only warning. You point a firearm at anybody, loaded or unloaded, and you are done. Any questions on that? I am deadly serious on that. We'll be shooting lots of blanks during the weekend reenactment, but staying safe with guns is really quite simple. Never point a gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. Keep the firearm unloaded until you're ready to use it. Uh, and keep your finger outside the trigger at all times. Horses need gun training too. Gunfire can of course spook a horse. So we spent an afternoon in the arena with our mounts, teaching them that gunfire tastes good. Okay, you guys ready? Starting on the ground, our officers would fire off a blank and then we'd give our horse a bite of some tasty grain. Very effective training. We've had great success with it. What uh, some people take a month to train, we can do it in just a couple hours. You know, allow us to have, be safe when we do the reenactment and the other training we do. Okay, hold it. We'll feed. By the end of the session, we were back in the saddle again, each taking a turn firing a weapon horseback. All right, you're, you're the new number one. Yep. You're going to shoot to your right when you're ready, when we're moving. You can take two rounds. Forward. Nice run. With our four-legged friends being rewarded after every shot. You get to smell the uh, gunpowder. Get to get used to the powder flash. Want to be near the weapon. At the front. Mark. Meantime, other troopers were practicing daily horseback drills to learn and perfect formation riding, just like the 7th did back in the day. Cavalry units rode single file, in twos, and in combat, operated in groups of four. Troopers would often dismount to fire on foot, with three troopers shooting carbines, while the fourth held the horses. That horse holder was a prime target for the Sioux and Cheyenne warriors at the Little Big Horn. No horse meant no chance for a cavalryman stranded on foot. And riding the battlefield, you really see why.